to get the most accurate signal reproduction. We can use Regal's new Sci-Fi 2 technology in the DG800 and DG900 series generators to more accurately reproduce signals both in the time domain and the frequency domain. Let's first look in the time domain. The DG900 generator has three modes of filtering in Sci-Fi 2 technology. First one we're going to look at is a step function. So here's the rising edge of a square wave using the step filtering technique. We can take that same square wave and use the smooth filtering function. That gives you a little more overshoot, uh, a little more higher frequency components, a little different look to the overall waveform. For complete uh, customization, you can also use the interpolation mode. This allows you to go ahead and set, individually set the edge time. Here we can move the edge time up from about 8 nanoseconds to about 88. So this gives you real complete customization of the high frequency components and the way the waveform is filtered. So even though it's always going in a point by point mode, you get m more signal fidelity compared to what you're trying to reproduce. Now let's look at those same three filtering modes, but what they mean in the RF space. So we're, here we have a real time spectrum analyzer with about a 5 megahertz bandwidth. So this is DC to about 5 megahertz on the screen. That's our step function, which produces, produces a pretty sharp fall off in the, in the megahertz frequency noise range. There's our smooth function, again a little more overshoot, that causes a little more uh, power in the medium, uh, about right center frequency, about 2.5 megahertz range for this particular waveform. And if we switch to the interpolation mode, we can see because of the sharp edges on those transitions, we get a lot more high frequency components. Now we can go and again adjust the edge time there, and as the edge time gets, gets lower, we can see we get even more at the, at the highest frequency, more, more noise, more signal, and then down again. So you really have complete customization of how you want that signal to look both in the time domain and in the RF domain for the first time with Sci-Fi 2 technology and Regal's DG800, DG900 series generators. One of the three advanced functions of the DG8 and DG900 series arbitrary waveform generator is pseudorandom bitstream. To find this function, you go into the advanced menu of the instrument, and then you hit the PRBS function, and this stands for just pseudorandom bitstream. And within here, you can choose your baud rate, amplitude, offset, and then your data choice, which you have three different data functions you can choose from, PBRS7, PBRS9, and PBRS11. And then once you have selected all those settings, you can then just turn the output of the waveform generator off and it will create a pseudo-random bitstream, which this is great for testing circuitry and filter testing before you actually send data through your circuitry. Let's take a look at how 16-bit resolution can improve your waveform accuracy. In this live averaged look at both signals, with 16 bits on channel 1 in yellow and 14 bits on channel 3 in purple, two arbitrary waveform generators running the same arbitrary wave. The 16-bit waveform takes 4x smaller steps and typically four times as often. This improves accuracy by reducing the RMS error compared to the original signal by more than a factor of two, creating more accurate signal capabilities. One of the new features in the DG800 and DG900 series waveform generators from Regal is sequence mode. We find it here in the advanced menu under sequence. What sequence mode allows us to do is to combine different types of waveforms and different uh, waveform levels to really com create uh, complete complex waveform types like you might use in a manufacturing environment or a high speed test environment, whether you're testing 
you know, biological, chemical, or electronic samples, you know, the ability to quickly switch between uh, signal types uh, is critical to throughput and evaluation of those test processes. Let's see how it works. We can go in and set uh, both a signal type from either our standard signals and a period, or more complex signals like arbitrary waves. Here, we'll go ahead and select an arbitrary wave and a sync function. We can also additionally select uh, DC levels or other signal types between these. In this mode, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and set a waveform with one sinusoidal period, two square wave periods, uh, three ramp periods, four sync arbitrary sync function periods, and then a DC level between. Now we can also set the sample rate, the output rate, up to about 60 mega samples. Today let's just do one mega sample per second. So each of those waves has 8,000 points in it. So we can combine them and articulate them in different ways and add our own arbitrary waves to make it even more complicated. So on the oscilloscope we can see all these waves next to each other. We're triggering on a signal with uh, our sine, square, ramp, and then arbitrary waves, and then DC level in between. And you can see it repeating then from there. So really the ability to combine different types of signals with gaps in between, uh, timing, arbitrary waves, as well as the sync functions uh, to synchronize the generator with other test devices makes it great for manufacturing and sample testing in a variety of industries and environments. The DG800 and DG900 series arbitrary waveform generators both come with a built-in dual tone function, which this allows you to create an ever more complex signal by being able to choose two different frequencies, which can be useful for filter testing. To use this function, you go into dual tone section of the continuous menu, and then you can set up your first frequency. I'm going to say set the first frequency to 15, let's go megahertz. And then I'll do the second frequency, I'm going to say 20 megahertz. And then I've already got the amplitude set up to negative 10 dBm, but I can set it to other forms of amplitude, and I can also choose an offset. Then I'm going to turn the output on. And in order to show the dual tone functionality of this waveform generator, I've actually connected it to a spectrum analyzer, so we can see the two different frequency tones on the display, centered around the 17.5 megahertz center frequency. The DG800 series and DG900 series arbitrary waveform generators both come with a harmonic function which can go up to the eighth harmonic. To enter this it's in the continuous menu and then you just press on the harmonic function. And I've already gone through and set the first harmonic to be at 10 megahertz and have an amplitude of negative 10 dBm. I can also then choose our offset and then phase of the first harmonic. Then next we have our type and we can either select even, odd, both, or user. Let's start with both. And once we're in that, we can then choose the number of harmonics we'd like to display. Right now I have all eight turned on and I've already preset all of them. But just to go through some of the, how you can set each one. Let's set number two. So we can choose our number count to be number two. Then we can choose our amplitude and then our phase offset for the different harmonics. <clears throat> now with them all turned on, let's turn on the output of our waveform generator. And what we'll see on our spectrum analyzer, just to show the eight different harmonics, is our first harmonic is up at negative 10 dBm and then they drop 5 dBm for each harmonic going down. And this can be a very useful function for showing either a complex signal or creating a noise signal or adding noise to a signal. Now to show what the user function on the different types can do, let's put in the user menu. And what this can allow us to do is we can actually choose which harmonics we want to be turned on at a given time. So we have to have our first harmonic on, which is why it's X'd out. And then say if we want our second harmonic on, we set it to 1. And then our third, if we don't want it on, we'll set it to 0. And then we could say turn our fourth on and fifth on. 
Now let's turn the 6th and 7th off, and then we'll turn the 8th on. And what we'll see on our spectrum analyzer is we'll be missing the 3rd, um, 6th, and 7th harmonic, and we'll see the rest being displayed. And this can be useful for creating, adding noise to a signal or creating an ever more complex signal. One of the three advanced functions of the DG800 and DG900 series, arbitrary waveform generator, is the RS232 function. This function is located in the advanced menu and then in the RS232 section. What the RS232 function allows you to do is set a known bitstream, uh, known RS232 bitstream out of the waveform generator into your test device. And within this menu, you can choose your baud rate, amplitude, offset. Data, number of data bits, stop bit, parity bit, and then you can also choose your data bit. So say if you want to send a specific value, say 35, you can easily send that. And then when you output the signal, you'll be outputting 35 in a decimal form out of the waveform generator on an RS-232 signal. Let's look at the three different ways to load an arbitrary waveform into a Regal DG900 arbitrary waveform generator. The first way is by using a USB memory stick. Here we've connected a USB memory stick to the back that contains um, a CSV file and some files we, we're going to use today. To access that file, you can simply go into the store menu. Here it's the D drive. We can sort through and find the file we want. In this case, let's open this CSV file. Then we'll just hit read. So it's opened it, it's brought it in as a waveform. Now we can adjust the sample rate. Here we're going to set it to 8.192 mega samples. That, with a with an 8192 point ARB, that gives us an even one kilohertz repeat frequency on this waveform. And now we see it on the scope, um, showing the um, cycles, two cycles of the combination waveform. The second way we can load an arbitrary waveform into the Regal DG900 waveform generator is to pull samples directly from an oscilloscope. Here what we'll do is we'll connect the USB cable into the back of the generator. It's also connected into the back of the oscilloscope. Now we can use that same menu we just used, the store menu, and now we have an option for oscilloscope at the bottom. We select the channel, and here we can select between screen data or raw data. Here we're going to use the screen data. We're going to pull that over. So there we have the screen data is pulled over and replayed by the generator back under the oscilloscope. So this is a great way to capture waveforms quickly um, from your tests and then emulate and generate those signals. The final way to work with arbitrary waves within the DG900 is to use the UltraStation software. Here we've connected over USB to the instrument. We can open files like our ARB wave. This is an RAF file, that's a Regal arbitrary file. So this file type allows the instrument and the software to recognize both the shape and some of the settings timing wise within the file. Now, once we've edited the file the way we want, we can insert segments, make changes. We can then download the wave to the instrument. Here we'll set it to channel 1, turn the output on when it's ready. So UltraStation is the third way to manipulate, edit, and then finally upload waveforms to the generator. So between USB, pulling data from your oscilloscope, and using the software, Arbitrary waves are easy to use with your Regal DG900s.
Today I'll be demonstrating how to activate the dual channel license onto a DG800 series. Here we actually have a DG811 which has the second channel not enabled yet. And just to prove that's not enabled I'm going to press output 2 and we'll see a warning message on our display saying that's not active. To activate your license you first want to go to the Regal NA website. And once you've done that you scroll to the bottom of the page and click on the activation link on the right hand side. Once here what you're going to do is enter in your license key which is what was emailed to you. Once this has been activated you'll see in red on the right hand side just confirming what sort of key it is for. And then what you'll do is you'll enter in your instrument serial number. And then we'll see in red again it verifying that it's in fact a serial number. And then what you want to do is enter in the verification code. Once you've done that click generate. And then you'll get hit with another message basically wanting you to confirm the key and serial number. Once you've done that, press OK. This will then generate your license code, which is this long number here next to software license code. Or you can download the file for this particular instrument and install it via a flash drive, which is what we will be doing. Now that we've loaded the license file onto a flash drive and inserted it into the back of the instrument, we're now going to press the storage button and then select the D drive, which is our flash drive, and then we'll select our license file here. Once we've done that, we're going to press read and this will read the license. Now that the license has been activated, we can now turn on channel 2. And just to prove it's actually working, we'll remove the optional cover now. And we've connected a BNC cable here to our oscilloscope. And I'll now connect that to channel 2. And we'll see on our oscilloscope a sine wave. 